title of today's episode is called Locations of Abstraction. And so we want to go uh, towards the mighty task of trying to explore what abstraction means and what our subtler planes are. So we want, we do not want to just call it imagination and just sit on our very uh, limited seats. We want to reach for the limitless now and begin to see where the location of abstraction is. And so when such a question comes, if you are selfless, you immediately go to the answer and to where the moment is leading. So when you become aware of the flow of your moment, any fluctuation of form in your reality just becomes a part of you, so you're comfortable with all manifestations. Karma was only for the being who thought he was chained to his individuality. Beyond individual recognition, there cannot be an individual karma because you are collectively manifest. You're not just experiencing through the eye of the person who is dying, but also the person who is doing the killing. You become a multidimensional experience of what is real. And at times we, we can't really tell what is real because it gets a bit shaky from our linear sense of looking at things. So man must begin uh, creating, uh, uh, in, in regards to how he's perceiving thought, ways of the linearity uh, working through non-linear intelligence. So what that means is throughout the day you need to give yourself very profound existential allowances to do things not as just you, but as the whole cosmos being expressed through you. With a consideration and a mindfulness of the totality of your moment doing the act. And you will see the act will be done by itself, simply. Because self-awareness also meant that you, the branches of knowledge were just integratively known. So what that means is man has a position in his knowledge where he can integratively know it after very deeply self-contemplating where nature is and what nature is, the nature of reality. So it is simply the flow of observance that is suggesting how much man can give himself permission to exist in grander ways. So when we look at abstraction, we cannot ignore the individual that's been making choices and the fact that you are right now a unique pattern. You are from your unique culture, your unique wherever, you know, even though we're all citizens of the cosmopolites, as Diogenes has said. We need to see that uh, reality is one where we must choose to create a conscious, conscious reference point and then from that build on. So what that means is, is, let's say I'm just suddenly thrown into a situation I have no idea what to do. What I will do is I would immediately bring my awareness to the present moment and whatever is present will be the communication that needs to be handled. Do you see? I don't begin with, oh, I'm this idea trying to go through life to get better ideas. You know, I'm, I don't have that mentality because that mentality is artificial because you are keeping it artificial. You are not discovering your truth to their absolute experiential uh, peak. And so, you know, there's some people who look at mountains and they climb and there's some people who get to the peak and also look at the sky and wonder, gosh, the next mountain is actually the sky. How do I get up? <laughs> and so that's when you consider the quality of your life being one that is observantly untouched, but you're aware of every touch in this life. And being so sensitive to how reality is in this way, you are in bliss because the freedom of expression is infinite. When you know existential is a being, you have freedom of expression. That means you're not bound by the considerations of space and time, which you have in a very conditioned way accepted, but also considered. So the reason it's such a profound experience within you is because you are looking at an aspect of self which only you were keeping. You are being confronted. There's no one else but the self. And so if many people looked at those men sitting in the Himalayas, looked at those holy men who just, their silent gaze suggested how they abided. 
in the self. You see that some people may think they're just people sitting down, but others will look at the world such a unique being is living and will begin to see that the lies of their world was false. So I find a great mind is no longer comparing bodies. You're not saying, oh, how do I look? How does this look? Is this guy deserves this? This guy doesn't deserve that. This guy should have this. This guy shouldn't have that. We are just shifting our consciousness and just the depth of the questions are increasing because we have been in the same cycle for too long. What that means is the beautiful thing about the cradle of life is that you're always trying to get out of it and understand where you're going to. And so when man reaches that point where he is serious with his direct experience, voices like that of Mr. Within, which are always present through the silence as well, are ones that are useful to you. Because now, the, as your direct experience from your idea, individuation and ego shifts and you become the experience of the whole reality rather than just a body in the reality, you begin to see that the nature of your consciousness is always able, for that is how creation is manifest. That is how ideas are new and novel to you. That is how we're still moving around. So the gift of life is a transcendent one in which man can, through this station and platform of existential self-awareness, recognize that existence is beyond the interpretation of a lower state of consciousness when there's a higher one innately within all things. So what that means is go see what these people about realization have said. To be honest, if it was a one-man thing, he'd do it and just leave, you know? But the reason it was brought down the reason perhaps the Buddha uh, experienced eternal silence and then began to speak was because in the introduction of a higher state of consciousness, your thoughts are no longer individual and so the grace of the greater being becomes one where he's never holding on to his greatness. And that is what great, great men have done. They have not hold on, held on to their greatness. They have dissolved into their absolute experience. And in doing so, their contribution has naturally come. Because when you are being aware of your mission, not being one to have a happy life suggested by self-help books, but one where you are here to explore your absolute reality, your absolute truth, you begin to see that when you go on that journey, on that uh, search through the heart, of the clarity of existence. Life will guide you. Your, your physical responsibilities will not just be handled by this collective flow of your sense of vision, but you will see that your greatness in vision made you into all possibilities. And let me tell you, because when infinity comes to those who are considered as gods, they are confronted by the fact that this infinity is so probable and in so possible in any maze, it has been compa compassionate in infinite ways. So what that means is, throughout my, my life, I thought mankind was bad. I thought he was good, do you know? And I was just constantly looking, and then I realized the possibility and ability of a self-aware being into considering manifestation into its present moment is infinite. And that means that I cannot speak about it because it is transcendental and it is beyond our man's recognition of space and time and it always was. And so this is where suddenly books such as the Upanishads get a, get a new glow where it's written as if the book was never written by a man and it was never for man. The book was there to be a pillar of higher consciousness. And so hopefully the new renaissance <laughs> that is going to happen <laughs> Hopefully by these talks, you know, we'll shift man's consciousness. And you know, it's, it's kind of like, right now my strategy is, I saw the butterfly effect, so I hope that my simplest and most honest actions will do the greatest things. So, so that is the vision of... <laughs> how simplicity also enters your life. 
you observe the complex. So what that means is when playfulness comes into your life, you are not just beyond an experience of a character in a story throughout the day, but you are growing in ways where your, your world is evolving. You know, it's like this is a concept which it, it hasn't been talked about, but I think mankind is ready. Hopefully. <laughs> that mankind is ready. So, see it in this way that we have looked at that chart in our science textbooks and we have seen, all right, the monkey stood up, that's nice. And the man stood up, so what's the man going to do next? You know, where's, where's humanity evolving, which is a question for all human beings, I believe. Right? So when you begin to look at this, you see something very phenomenal happening at the stage of evolution where the human being is. And what that means is that as the ape grew into self-awareness, in its self-awareness, it distinguished a self and a sense of other. A sense of this is the external world, this is the world. Now, as culture and humanity has been developing, he's recognizing that, that since that moment of conscious self-consideration, there has been a buildup of experiences made into many stories. And you see, these stories all are present in a way where you can exist in all of them because you are the originator. It doesn't matter if they tell you, uh, tell the projector, the intelligence that is keeping the projector on, whether the projector was, but never was here or was here. You know, whether the projector was from the light or was, where the, whether the projector was from the dark. No, the nature of its presence was one where both realities were possible, regardless of the chosen one in which an individual found himself in. So in that self-awareness of man and world to integratively be seen as moments of existence that are completely all holistically here, as your present moment is perceived outside of a segmentation, outside the segmentation of space and time, you are see about garbage because garbage was a concept for man when he separated himself from his world. You won't call it garbage when you realize it is just an existential form and you're observing the plane of reality and so your considerations of space and time must be clear. And how could it be clear? Without the comparison that could never be trusted with just the full awareness of to where you are existing which is now. And this is where personality shifts to presence because you are no longer uh, being captured in spectrums of duality. Whether it's suggested by others or whether it's suggested by uh, those in your past and your memory. Human psychology, based on its multidimensionality and transcendental, transcendental attitude, suggests that we can't really know who we're talking to. And we can't really know who we are. So if there is such a basis and foundation in our existential awareness that is, it's as if we're not looking at this before we're deciding, oh, this is the world I'm living in, oh, it's nice, it's a nice place, I like Earth, you know. I like, ooh, I like Earth in movies, you know. So you need to see that you are not allowing direct experience to be perceived but an I, by an idea that is kept by direct experience. Realization means that you always had your real lives. Evolution is getting a multidimensional twist and it seems to be the same twist in the infinity sign. So be aware to the nature of your design and before anybody tells you what to do, make sure you observe the self that is existing here, the self that is through you. Trust me, it's, it's a very, very powerful uh, combination of human behavior. 
that you go simply sit down and become very silent and gentle and just uh, meditate in the silence of your being. And as you do, you become aware of how you've been interpreting noise and how you've been seeing others. You get moments where you suddenly realize, oh my God, I've been talking to this person like this, but I could not, I, I did not see this and this dimensions of their experience, which was happening at that time, you know? So be compassionate because everyone is climbing this mountain and, you know, uh, suffering is simply just how the rocks are, you know? <laughs> So trust that you will continue on because you always have. And so learn from every moment, whether it's eating uh, uh, food after a fast, or whether it's uh, begin to see that the locations of abstraction were in the presence that's, that kept reality here. And so in the awareness of that, you will see that you can try to continue with the individual idea that you're this, this uh, individual thing, which changes every time you're having a, you walk into a different environment. <laughs> or you can choose to see a self that is beyond the questions you're asking. Sometimes you don't need an answer to your question because your question could, could be coming from a reality that's not even yours. Sometimes you need an answer that shakes off the limited personalities that you have held on to, and so presence is found. And presence has been the guiding force of man. It is what is found in the greatest teens and the greatest humans. It is found in uh, what it is what is found in in the most compassionate views of existence, of viewing life. When you live for life, you see life has always lived for you. Nothing was against you. And in a sense, nothing could ever be with you. And your awareness of these two aspects, which are your wings into the depths of man's mind. give flight to where you will realize your existential intelligence and you will kind of like remember yourself out of the ideas you've been associating with and then after that moment you will see that because you've gone into a realm of dissociation from all that limitation if you want to do something now you can really do it so it's not that the mystic and the yogi get superpowers it's just that they just become aware that the limitation where the limitation is coming from and as they're in constant devotion of the absolute being of all things whether it's basking in the imagery of god or in the terms of science unified field unified field theory regardless of how it's being symbolized Man is beyond his limitations, so your greater experience is the choice to trust the life that you are. You know, I, I thought about it and I'm like, gosh, I could think about making a choice right now and my whole life's gonna be about, oh gosh, what choice am I gonna make next? What choice am I gonna make next? But for a second, I put the choices away and I wondered what would happen if I didn't do anything. And I noticed that I would just get observance. And so you don't want to go 100 years in this reality <laughs> and constantly being in a state of thought where you're incomplete because you don't have the time or you're not doing enough work. Hard work is good. I mean, I get it. Hard work gets some stuff done, but hard work in a limited reality means that why are you not seeking the greater aspects of your vision? Why are you not excited to see how far you can see? Why are you not excited to see the
galaxies in your eyes. Abstraction has location because your sense of self has a location. But as you become aware that you are a self-aware being, you are always omnisciently observing your individuality. It's part of your existential intelligence. And as you are aware of this, you will find a moment within you where you have given yourself a permission beyond the ideas you have associated with. And so in many, uh, let us say, in the tradition of yoga, it was as if like this divine surrender, you know, this devotion. It was perhaps the peak of bhakti yoga, where there was such devotion, such love for the manifestation of the world of form that you dissolved and you were the experience of it. So what that means is if you can experience love, it is because you have love. If you cannot experience love, it's because you have not love. And so this love is not some fluffy imagery which the media had to interpret for you. It is that knowing of what is keeping uh, all form present here. So it, don't you think it's a bit odd that we are saying everything is made of energy and there's a unified field and there's such a collective world, but we're, we're, just, we're just looking at, let's say, the grass in the park and it's all very separate and you're like, I'm not, I'm not seeing any energy, you know? I'm not seeing any unified field theory, you know? <laughs> you know? I'm not seeing some any absolute reality. So you need to see that there is a problem here because that is how the journey is continuing. trust yourself and you need to trust if you are a human being who, who is working with external considerations of reality in which you are like okay I gotta go to work tomorrow I suggest that what you need to do with that is you need to maintain yourself without interpretation so don't hurry yourself because you think you're gonna die and you're not gonna get enough okay and very calmly in mind walk without any suggestion just observe the suggestions that come to your mind. It's, it's like a very peaceful moment where I thought I had to think alone, but when I changed my environment, it's as if my environment was doing the thinking for me, for me by my perception, by my direct vision. So what that means is we owe it to the future generations to make a good environment where they can grow up. Do you know? It'd be so bad if we don't do that. You know? <laughs> you know? So what that means is that we need to enhance human communication through existential understanding, which is originated from direct self-awareness to find where experience is. Trust me, we're all brothers and sisters in existence. It's, 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 it's the ideas that come and make us think that we're our own greatest enemy. <laughs> So, we need to consider that any reality projected, any form, is on some level suggesting what is here, but is also suggesting how we are currently perceiving. So, by being aware of this, you can always choose the intensity of how much you are being affected by the communication that's happening outside of you. Whether you're watching a movie you, you don't like or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you, happens to you, let's say something very chaotic suddenly happens in front of you. And if that happens, you are grounded in an existential awareness that is eternal without needing the word eternal because it is not bound to a definition. Do you see? And so you simply become this gentle awareness where that person walking in the park alone was just being a graceful moment of life. That's it. You know? I mean, the pigeons definitely thought that because you feed pigeons. <laughs> the pigeons know. So be very playful with reality because that gives you space to um, work with multi-dimensional perception with more trust in life.
playful being is a being who's trusting life. And so that is why their state of being as consciousness is more open because they're not creating limitation for themselves. <laughs> so signs of spontaneous laughter are brilliant. That is, that is, that those are, those are, I don't want to say symptoms, but those are signs of you shifting your state of awareness when suddenly profound levels of humor come because you were never that idea. You never were just that person who messed up. You were all the experiences of that person who messed up, which are observed beyond that limitation. Do you see? So instead of reading about the mind, I suggest you observe your mind and see that it doesn't have to always need an interpretation or something to write down. Mankind should not get too much of an obsession to having to have the knowledge written down and examined and corrected in a way, you know? That's as if one subtler plane of dimension is suggesting your whole intelligence, you know? We're multidimensional beings. Our observance of the page in which the examination on is on is beyond. <laughs> it is so much more complex and profound than what's written on the exam paper. And you would see there would be two ways that there would be very different kinds of teachers. You know, there would be one kind of teacher would be like, all right, I've, hello, kid, hello, students, I have papers for you. I have, uh, <laughs> I have the books here and everything, and I'm going to give you a two-hour talk, and please be quiet while I'm talking. You know, there's the one kind of teacher like that, and there are, there's another kind of teacher, which was back in the day where this teacher took the student and threw him in the jungle. You know, and he's like, you... When you are alive, that is when you are my student, you know? And you would see that that kid, it's not that he had to stay in that position, it's just that because he wanted to reach a higher state of awareness, he had to go through experiences and to confront those challenge, the challenges with challengeless eyes, with graceful eyes. Abstraction has no location when you are direct experience. When you are being playful into recognizing an external aspect, in other words, when you individualize into form, that's as if you're stepping into this dimension from a higher place. So what that means is my words and my hands and me moving and me taking a step is actually my conception kept by a higher state of awareness, which is aware of the duality. So what that means is for the human idea of me, for the, for, for the physical body of the human being, when he's going to the absolute being aspect, when he's exploring the nature of absolute being, he, is, he will suddenly begin uh, getting excited and so there comes the divine laughter and whatever and suddenly the transitions and it's becoming the most unknown end and suddenly as the end ends you see that because there's a beginning there never was an end And that you always had infinite capacity to experience. You will see that it's all kept here through your knowing of existence. In a sense that when you look at the self-awareness, it's as if man, one of the first early things that he understood was, oh, okay, so, the, you know, the child recognized himself in the mirror. And now as we grow on, okay, so we recognize others and we're going on with this conception of creation, you know. And suddenly you begin to see that there are mirrors within you that are suggesting that how you search in the moment suggests what is found in the moment. So the quality of your vision in your moment of existence is where there is the ability to move beyond the limitation when you're aware of the experience because quality was simply what was suggesting the totality of the experience and so may man recognize that it is now time to take more greater existential roles. You are here to handle externality smoothly and you do it not by and 
being an individual that's fighting for your life, but by trusting everything that is presented in the moment of awareness. And as you do, you will realize that there is no reason to have reason. There's no reason to suddenly bring tons of structure and wonder why things aren't working out based on the structure that you keep. I could pay, put shades on and wonder why it just got darker, but I, it's, it's me who's put it on. I can always take it off. And so as you observe, uh, you realize that you need to be compassionate to others then to then realize the totality of how you are compassionate to self where is where self-exploration becomes very fruitful too. What that means is self-discovery is not for everyone but globalization is, is taking a new stand right now. And so we're going to try it out. <laughs> I hope this talk has served you. Uh, I talk about the pilots of consciousness and these are beings who are, away, or who are aware of their plane of existence beyond ideology so they are natural intuitive emanations of where they know they exist so they're existentially life sensitively oriented and you will see the pilots of consciousness are compassionate not to just uh, human beings animals and anything any other life form they are compassionate to the existential are in bliss because every moment of them being in existence is the profoundity suggesting where else they can be. And so the Buddha has this quote where he says, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And if you are not aware of compassion, the pilot will begin to see that he will suddenly feel as if he's being thrown to an individual reality where it's as if the, he, he suddenly feels like a passenger. The pilot of consciousness is the self-awareness that is always aware of now. And so the passengers are simply the transition of form within an un unspeakable and untouchable awareness that is present. And the profundity of that presence is the new mirrors of man. The pilot of consciousness knows before he knows, sees before he sees, hears before he hears. And feels before he feels. It is all here. It is us who are very blissfully accepting the existential responsibility of creating a there. So the totality of life was the life that was totally here. Much blessings, you know.